Hey guys, back out from my pad here. Today we're gonna do our June tour. Guys, I cannot wait to take you through the garden and show you what's growing now. The last tour we did, I believe, was the end of March and everything was brown and just beginning to wake up. And guys, in just a couple of weeks of rain, things have like really exploded. So without further ado, let's get started. June tour, Central Florida Zone 9B. Let's get started, guys. So the last tour we did, I started off in the front yard. So let's start in the backyard today. And guys, look, you remember my passion fruit vine that I had cut back to maybe three or four feet? It is growing, growing, growing and taking over my arches. And you guys remember I did a video on how I set these arches up. So now I can walk clearly under here without getting stuck. So my passion fruit is just now beginning to set fruit. So I'm really excited about that. I only have like two fruit on it so far, but the, the season is still very young. And if you look at the corners, there's a whole lot of little blossoms coming out. So I know I'm going to have a ton of passion fruit because I see a whole lot of blossoms coming out now. It's just a matter of them um, growing and getting pollinated. And I am not short of pollinators. My garden is full of pollinators, so I know in no time this is going to be loaded with passion fruit. You can see it's already spread into the second um, arch here, so we're going to have lots of passion fruit. Everything is just exploding with color, guys. If you look at my vervain or my blue porter weed, it's exploding color. I'm going to have a video coming up soon. Um, I'm going to be making some tinctures with my vervain. And guys, you can see. The pollinators just love the vervain. There's always butterflies, always bees on here. On this side here, um, of course, my oregano, everything is doing great. I had planted, um, I guess, some seminal pumpkins um, months ago. And this was basically doing nothing. And all of a sudden, it started growing. So I have a, a, a couple of fruit that are just now beginning to set. It has blossomed several times. But the blossoms are normally male blossoms so now that the fruit is setting i'm hoping to get some seminal pumpkins on on here which is great because i literally just harvested most of my jamaican pumpkins so guys i'm gonna have pumpkins like dirt so guys here's my rosemary my my cuban oregano my everything is just doing great and guys look at my murasaki sweet potatoes guys they have completely taken over this bed um, I pulled out most of the tomatoes. I pulled out um, just about everything except, well, I do have a, a couple of tomatoes that are still poked in there along with my basil, but everything is basically taken over by my sweet potatoes and by my yams, guys. I have African yams. I have yellow yam, white yam. And look at that, guys. It's just taking over the place. Look at that. So guys, I'm going to have tons of yam. And look at the size of these yam leaves. They're so healthy, so beautiful. So more to come on that. I don't want to miss this side. Guys, look at my my um, my um butterfly peas. Guys, look at my butterfly peas. Look at these flowers. It's covered with these flowers. As a matter of fact, I have a harvest video. I'm going to... I need to harvest really soon. I have butterfly peas everywhere and these flowers are very medicinal really good for sleeping a whole lot of benefits to it um very similar benefits to the vervain so i'm gonna be making some tinctures with the blue butterfly peas and with the um and with the vervain all right over here guys guys looky here looky here so i've been harvesting peppers and harvesting peppers and guys i cannot harvest enough there are just so many peppers. This is my Jamaican Scotch bonnet pepper. It's doing great. It is loaded still. But I'm, I'm going to be coming through and harvesting a lot of peppers. You can see some are falling off. I cannot afford to lose even one pepper. These peppers are so delicious, guys. And you can see I have the traditional Scotch bonnet pepper that has this shape. Looks like a little bonnet. And I have these, which are not a form of Scotch bonnet, but these are longer. My Thai chili pepper, guys. This is another 
wonderful pepper that I have that is profuse. This actually is very good when, when it's dried and ground up and then I use it as a like pepper flakes or you can make it into a pickle. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be making pickles soon with my scotch bonnets and my Thai chili peppers. Guys, here is another scotch bonnet pepper. This is another, um, this one here is similar in shape to the other one. But guys, it's it's really strange because I know I had some cachucha peppers, which are also in the scotch bonnet family. I have a strong feeling somehow they cross with the yellow scotch bonnet. Cachucha are normally um, red, but they have the same pro uh, flavor profile as scotch bonnet. These have the shape of cachucha, but the flavor of scotch bonnet. So, and as you can tell, the tree is very, very prolific. All my peppers are doing extremely well. Um, here I have my... This is my first time growing um, banana peppers and I need to, I, I've harvested um, a couple times already, I need to harvest these. The more you harvest guys, the more you'll, you'll um, get peppers. Um, over here I have my jalapeno pepper and guys, this also is doing extremely well. Look at that. I harvested some of these, well, I harvested one of these for my, when I made my, um, salsa verde the other day but i still have a lot on here and a lots of blossoms coming out so that's it for my veggie bed over here i have my strawberries coming in nicely i have some strawberries coming in here and these are all volunteers these are all my bok choy that after i pulled out the corn the bok choy grew up but of course i have my marigolds throughout then in this bed i just planted some okra seedlings and you can see they're coming up really nicely they were a little bit slow at first but now that it started raining they started coming up nicely this one is a little bit behind but it's okay it will catch up here i have a few watermelon seeds that i put in the center then guys over here these are some more watermelon seedlings that i had started it's just beginning to run now need to kind of clean this up that looks i don't know what what that is it looks like a little bit burnt all right, girls, I'm gonna come let you out. Over here, guys, you can see all of this green on the ground. That's all Cersei. And I did my video last year on my Cersei and the medicinal value for Cersei. I'm gonna be pulling up Cersei. I actually started pulling it up and drying it. So many, many, many people reached out to me regarding Cersei last year. But by the time they reached out, I'd already used most of it as compost or dried most of it for my family. So this time I'm making sure I'm going to allow a lot of them to go to seed so I can give you guys seeds and um, I'm going to be selling bags of Cersei on my Etsy store. So be on the lookout for that. So guys, for my star fruit, my star fruit, I have my very first star fruit from this tree for this for the season. This is the star fruit tree that's right beside the chicken run area. And I hear the girls making up all this noise. They are ready to come out. I'm trying to do a really early video before the sun comes out. Let me let the girls out. Hey girls. Hey. Morning. Where are your sisters? All right. Your sisters in their laying eggs? I heard a whole lot of ruckus. So I guess a couple of them are in their laying eggs. All right. Uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. All right, boss lady. So as we walk al along here, guys, um, this is my frangipani that I planted a cut in by the chicken run area. Guys, you can see how beautiful it is. I have frangipani throughout the property and they are all, most of them are beginning to bloom. This one hasn't bloomed yet, but you can tell it will bloom soon. Here I have, guys, I have to say, thornburn is my new favorite tomato. I just stuck a tomato, I, I, I think I stuck, I guess a seedling along here. It has been barren and barren and barren and we're in south we're in central florida where it's hot and it just bears and bears there's something i think i have a field rat or something something keeps eating them i've covered most of the tomatoes in on the other side i need to come back and cover these um before i was losing literally dozens of tomatoes um throughout the garden until i started covering them so if you guys have that problem make sure you cover your tomatoes so guys this magic pumpkin vine is really magical. Um, you can see this is a new pumpkin that just came out a couple weeks ago and it's very big. It's already very big. 
Um, look at my cranberry hibiscus, guys. The, you remember these little cuttings? These little cuttings that, and seedlings that I planted, they are doing so well. Um, this one has probably quadruple or more in size just over the past maybe month or so. Um, in the chicken run area, I didn't get a chance to show you this. But guys, everything here is just popping. And I guess it's because the girls, they, I don't ha ever have to water in here, but they water it, they poop, they fertilize it. So everything here, my cranberry hibiscus, my blue porter weed, everything here is great. And guys, how could I walk past this very, very, very special tree? Guys, this is my pimento tree or allspice tree. Pimento is such a very um, important spice throughout the world especially in jamaica across india very very important spice i love it jamaicans who you know everybody who's been to jamaica has had jerk chicken and pimento wood is that special wood that they use to give it that good um, appet um that good flavor here i have my loqua tree i'm sorry little girl i just walked right past her here i have my loqua tree my longan tree, not my loquat, I'm sorry guys. My longan tree. Longan is a very special fruit. It's a small brown fruit. Um, I believe it's in the same family as lychee. Very, very sweet, really great fruit. It actually had blossomed once earlier, but you know, you guys know I don't even have a sprinkler system and I wasn't watering, so the blossoms fell off. Speaking about sprinkler systems, guys, I finally got my well. So I had my well installed a month or so ago and i'm going to be having a sprinkler um installed july 3rd so everything will will not just have to wait until rainy season anymore i'll be able to consistently water and hopefully my trees will explode even more here i have another star fruit tree this one has never blossomed this one has never given me a fruit so i'm hoping this year i'll get something it's a good size it's probably seven feet tall it looks like it's definitely the trunk is definitely big enough to sustain fruit so i'm really hoping that i get some fruit this year so guys this is where my pumpkin vine was and it, right after i went on vacation it had completely got eaten away you can see everything is completely gone but then guys like a week or two after when i came out here it was all green again and up until two days ago it had grown back all green again but then guys look at this the cabbage worms came in and ate it out completely. But I was able to, to harvest five big, well, one small and four large pumpkins yesterday. And I'm, I'm going to put a picture of it here. But you can still see I still have pumpkins growing. I didn't harvest that one yet um, because it didn't look like it was quite ready. Um, I'm not sure yet if, if it's worth even trying to spray this again. The last time I had, you can see all that poop from the worms. The last time... Um, as I said, when I lost my, when I thought I lost the van a few weeks ago, I came through and sprayed it with BT and BT is amazing guys. BT really kills any kind of caterpillars, any kind of worms. It does an amazing job. Uh, so I'm, I probably just leave the pumpkins there, let it continue soaking up whatever energy is in the vine and then I'll harvest those last two pumpkins. So guys, look at here, look at this. This is my grapevine. It's very small. As you can see, the last time I showed you, all I had was a few yellow leaves. Those yellow leaves are still here, but you can see it's beginning to grow. And you see that there are some green leaves coming on now. And guys, look at this. My little grapes are growing. It's just one bunch, but I'm very thankful for that one bunch. I'm gonna have some yummy grapes before you know it. As a matter of fact, I probably should put a bag on there to make sure no lizard, no rats are anything come and get our, our birds get my grapes guys right beside my grapes so when i did that tour i think it was in march i had loads of guava and i was i was har harvesting 10 guavas a day you know i was just walking by eating guavas every day and guys look at this now two months later guys this guava is the best guava on earth two months later guys and every single branch Every single inch of this tree has guavas, not just blossoms, but actual guavas, guys. Look at this. Look at this. And look at how, look at the size. Look at how this tree has exploded. Let me back up. This tree has probably tripled in size. Wait, no, it has doubled in size. 
since March. Since the end of March to now, two and a half months, three months, this has definitely doubled in size. So guys, I am extremely happy with these guavas. They're delicious. And for, for us island people who know in Jamaica how guavas are full of worms, guys, I haven't seen one worm on these guavas yet. So this is definitely a winner. I'm going to be um, air layering the lower branches of the guava tree so I can replicate the guava tree and have multiple. So it's going to take several months for the air layers to set, but I should have guavas um, ready to sell either later this year or early next year, maybe for spring. All right. So guys, I have my, uh, another rosemary plant that I stuck in here. This is from Keo of Homestead in the Burbs. This is my very, very special banana tree. This is from my in-laws tree and you know anything from that house i cherish it because my you know i lost my mother-in-law and then i really loved her so much so this tree is going to remind me of her because that's from her property and she started those bananas um here i have my hibiscus plant and guys i can tell you just weeks ago after i came back from vacation this tree every crevice every corner was covered with mealybugs and what I did was I paw washed the mealybugs and then I sprayed it down with, with a neem with a neem mixture and that really did a great job. I'm looking here and I see some mealy, mealy action under here. And right beside it, guys, this didn't have any mealybugs, but look, some of them migrated over here. So this is what mealybugs look like. It's different from white flies. These are a lot. You can see that there's a lot um that's what they let me show you they're like this fluffy fuzzy thing so I'm gonna go come back after the after the tour and I'm gonna pressure wash this I do not want these on my papaya on my um guava tree you can see it's right up against the guava and I don't want it killing this beautiful cranberry hibiscus guys did you, did you know that cranberry hibiscus is just packed with antioxidants and it's so yummy you can just eat the leaves like this I'm not gonna eat that one because it's over by the mealy bugs but I wanted you to see it. All right, so let's go check out. Oh, let's taste one of these cranberry hibiscus leaves. These can be used in salads. It has like a cranberry flavor, packed with antioxidants, lots of nutritional value, can be used as teas. Let me taste it. Mmm, mmm. And it's yummy. All right, so over here, this is a seedling that I planted. Um, this is ah, oh, actually this is my papaya seedling right here and right behind it this one snuck in this is actually a castor bean um, I was selling some castor bean seedlings for anybody who wants but um, that one snuck in I've been pulling them out because they grow very very fast and I don't want them to, to you know the, I don't want them to get to the point where they start creating seeds because then they're gonna fly all over the place so I've been pulling them out and you know, some of them I pot up, some of them I just, I just dump. But my papaya seedling that I planted just maybe a few months ago, you can see how big it is now. Here is another seedling, another um, cranberry hibiscus seedling. And then guys, look at this. Can you get, wait, let me, let me back up. This umbrella is in the way. This umbrella blew over last night. We had a little rainstorm yesterday. So guys look at this beauty that is taller than me who can tell me what this is guys look look at the size of these leaves guys this is the little baby aki tree aki is a jamaica national fruit and it's our national dish aki and saltfish and guys my aki tree that was literally i tell the story every time i planted a little stick like maybe this big and it was all the leaves had dried up. I thought that the trunk had dried up, but I didn't want to just dump it. So I stuck it in a pot and then it, it started forming leaves that I stuck it in the ground. And look at this guy, guys, it's over six, it's probably six feet tall. So my Aki is doing great. Over here, I have, these are the, the little pots that I started with first. Here I have a little Naysbury tree that I grew from seed. This is from my brother's Naysbury, dwarf Naysbury tree that came up. These are some cuttings that I have that all took root. I'm going to plant these into the garden. Then guys, here is a Rolinia seedling. 
This is a Rolinia seed and I planted the seed on February 8th. I planted the seed over four months ago. And here is a, a seed, the seedling that just came up. So it hasn't even opened up the leaves yet, but I'm super excited. That's actually a seed that somehow fell in my, in my um, it was, I found it in my pocket after I came back from Jamaica, from that 300 acre farm. So I planted it and guys, we have the Rolinia coming up. Here is some turmeric that came up that I had planted actually last year. Um, and I thought I harvested all the turmeric from other pots, but then this one popped up. So this is turmeric from last year. Then all along here, these are turmeric that I planted on 518. Um, I did that video on my potted plants and how to start potted plants. So here guys, you can already see it um, less than one month, just under a month, because today's Today is the 16th of June, so one month later, we have turmeric coming up here. I don't know why those are in the corner. Look, like I dropped them in the corner by mistake. I moved that over, but you can see turmeric popping up here. And then for my ginger planted that same day, you see ginger is already popping up. Um, back here, I have a chocolate scotch bonnet, pepper. Um, they haven't changed color yet, but you can see I have quite a few chocolate scotch bonnet peppers here. And then here I have the Jamaican dandelion. This is one of the seedlings that Johnny gave me from that tour I did at Johnny. And this one here, it looks like it's not gonna make it, but Jamaican dandelion. Then over here, these are from my Etsy store. I have, here's, um, here's one of the casa beans. I have some chaya that I, these are all rooted. I have chaya, I have lots of cranberry hibiscus, lots of chaya. Um, I have my oregano, Cuban oregano. I'm not gonna sell these though. I had stuck these in pots, but now they're so too big to ship. So I'm probably gonna, I may have a in-person um, yard sale. Um, we'll see. Here I have my vervain. I'm gonna I have some of these on my Etsy store. And then here I have my sunflower, my Mexican sunflower. And if you guys know my Mexican sunflower, that the big, huge plant that you see here behind the chicken run area, that is one Mexican sunflower. So you can control it. We just let it go because it's a great shade. We wanna create a lot of shade for the chickens. So that's why we leave over here kind of wild with the guys, look at all that. Remember I was telling you about the pollinators? Look at all those bees and bumblebees, everything. This it's a great pollinator if you want a lot of beauty in your garden and a great pollinator you know just add lots of flowers lots of medicinal flowers um anyway back to the mexican sunflower this is phenomenal not just for shade and and beauty because it has a really nice sunflower on it but it's also great as a chop and drop it's really most people who grow it they grow it as a chop and drop so before the, it forms seeds and flowers they chop all the green and they just drop it on their trees and it really builds up the soil. It's a really great for building up the soil. All right, guys, so let's see what else we have. Everything is kind of going back, but my, oops, my, I, my um, cow peas have taken over. My cow peas are growing really well. And of course I have more blue butterfly peas here. I have more butterfly peas um, that are growing along here. Over here, just have some more tomatoes and some more of those thornburn tomatoes. And guys, they're really, really, really delicious. Highly recommend the thornburns. All right, so we walked past a papaya. My papaya tree is now loaded, as you can see. Papaya is actually loaded. I haven't eaten any fruit from this one. The papayas have been giving me trouble, guys. They've been falling off. And there's, I've, I've just been struggling with disease with these papayas. Right now it doesn't look too bad. I'm hoping I get a good season. But I was struggling with the leaf spot and with the papaya um, bees that like they literally sting the papaya and then they rot. You see that one that's completely rotted right there. So that's a problem I've been having. So I've even considered just chopping the trees down because with the leaf spot, the spot drops on my other plants and my other plants that are below it get leaf spots. That's why I haven't sold any longevity spinach. I had to remove all my longevity spinach. I have some in other pots on another side of the property and some that is going back in a bed that is clean, but it's not enough to sell. So I know several people have reached out about that. 
so guys here I have my I can't remember what this one is called let's see my coral bush guys here I have my coral bush it is growing really nicely such a beautiful plant look at those leaves guys look at those leaves they're like artwork so this has grown, been going really nicely quite a few seed pods have been dropping I'm gonna dry those seed pods and see if I can propagate some more here I have my my um, Bombay Julie mango is also growing really well you can see a little bit of disease on the leaves but not stopping it from growing this one is probably about seven feet now so this is growing really well um, and it didn't fruit this year none of my mangoes fruited this year but at least you know the good thing is at least they, they're getting a chance to grow they're using the growth this growth season to grow instead of produce fruit so hopefully next year that means I'm gonna get tons of fruit comfrey is exploding comfrey is doing very well my white um, I'll put it on the screen uh, have more croton more um, hibiscus back there hibiscus they're really beautiful this one bears multiple color flowers so this one has um, um, orange or, or peachy color it has a uh, red color right here it's beautiful and guys you know I paid five dollars for those hibiscus I got the little tiny hibiscus I think at Lowe's the little small five dollar size and in no time it grew to that size here's another papaya this one has struggled the most you can see the fruit just looks really not too good all right so here I have I just literally just stuck these papaya seedlings in probably a month or two ago they're growing really nicely but guys you can see that leaf spot so that's why I'm considering chopping this one back maybe treating these two and then letting these two grow up papayas can grow and bear fruit within a year so even if I chop those the big ones back I should be able to get papaya you can see I'm just losing papaya guys these are just falling rotting on the ground um, this never happened to me when I was in South Florida but here it's a real struggle just to get the fruit to bear so guys this is a real disappointment right here I had this pot full of cocoa or, or edo and I meant to harvest it I meant to harvest it I didn't harvest it so literally I planted four cocoa in here um, no three cocoa probably a year ago I didn't harvest it and then I thought they had died back they died back and they came back and I didn't harvest it and guys look they all completely rotted so I ended up losing this entire pot of edo so this is one ginger variegated ginger I'm gonna transplant this but I'm gonna fill this pot up and I think I'm gonna be planting some sorrel I haven't planted sorrel yet and we're almost at the end of of June back here I have some cassava I have some tuna tuna I have some more cocoa here that I think I need to go ahead and just see if there's any cocoa on it here to harvest I'm gonna harvest these more blue um, porta weed here I have my carry mango I didn't get any fruit from my carry it also struggled with leaf spot I sprayed it with copper while it was blossoming it was literally covered with blossoms and I think I think that's a mistake I made because it was literally laden with blossoms um, eight I think 10 or 12 fruit formed but they all fell off and I think it's because I sprayed it while it was blossoming so that's a big mistake I made um, that's what I think was caused it but as you can see guys this is covered with new leaves new leaves new branches means more fruit for me next year here I have my mulberry which has given me loads and loads and loads of mulberry right now it's not really fruiting a lot it does have a few fruits still on there mm, but this is a wonderful tree to have and you can see it also was struggling with the leaf spot um, here I have a uh, coleus um, that I actually just took a cut in from somebody's house and from that cut in I had it in a pot for a while then after the after the winter passed I planted it out and just the past couple months it is it has gotten probably 10 times the size there I have more oh there I have my Spanish needle and I just posted a video on the benefits of Spanish needle you can see there's a little cocoa behind it here is my pineapple grove that is completely full of weeds 
whenever I buy a pineapple, I just stick it in the ground. You can see they're all taken off. Maybe next year I'll have some pineapple seed. Here I have more cassava, lots of cassava. Um, and guys, look at my naysbury tree, guys. Look at this. Wow, guys. I have so many naysberries on every branch. Look at this. Look at this beauty. Look at that. These are all naysbury blossoms. Every branch is loaded with naysbury blossoms. Last year, I didn't get any naysbury. The tree is still small. It looks a whole lot healthier than last year. The leaves were really struggling last year. The, all the leaves that you see now are new leaves that came out this year. And some of these blossoms are now just beginning to open up. Let's, let me show you. You see that? See that? So I'm hoping to get some naysbury. Quite a few blossoms are just opening up, guys. Yeah, quite a few blossoms are opening up. And my garden is, because it's so full of weeds, my garden is chock full of um, pollinators. Look at that. See all that Spanish um, needle or alba bidens? That attracts the pollinators. So here, my banana tree. This is a banana tree that is doing the absolute best. Some, I lost some other banana trees to the cold. This one didn't even blink. This one didn't miss a step. Cold and hail and damage, it still did well. So this may, I think that's gonna be the first banana tree that's gonna give me fruit. And you can see it has a very healthy sucker right beside it. And another one coming up in the ground. And then here guys, this is, this is um, Mexican sunflower and Kalalu growing right underneath it. Everything just grows together. So we passed my beautiful um, Vicks plant. And I love when people visit, I make everybody pick a leaf, crush it up, and I make everybody tell me what it smells like. For people in the island, everybody who grew up in the island, and probably here in America, when you get sick as a child, your mom rubs your chest down with Vicks. This has the same smell as Vicks, but what I use this for, and I can testify about this, is the other day we were barbecuing and there were like a million flies and mosquitoes, especially flies, there are a million flies out. We couldn't even sit and relax. I crushed the Vicks plant, rubbed it on my legs, rubbed it on myself, and all the mosquitoes disappeared, all the flies disappeared. It's also great if you're in the garden and you have mosquitoes, it helps. It helps a lot because it repels the mosquitoes and if you get a bite, you can just rub it on your skin. It produces this liquid and it really um, helps with the, with the bite. It helps the pain to stop. Here I have my Jamaican cherry and it's just now beginning to blossom. I have little blossoms coming out all over. So I'm very, very happy. This is my first time getting cherries, getting blossoms or cherries from this tree. I have more cassava here. This is a banana from Johnny's property. Johnny, that tour I did with Johnny. Back here, my red sugar cane is doing really well. It's growing very, very nicely. And here, guys, you can see this is a sea of Kalalu. I haven't harvested the seeds yet. I'm going to be putting the seeds on Etsy, so that's why I allowed it to, to go. Um, plus, my freezer is full of Kalalu right now. So I'll harvest what I can, but most of this is probably going to be pulled for the seeds. And then, and also, I, I'll throw it, I'll, I'll probably throw all of them in the bottom of a bed I'm about to create so that it can feed the bed. So, guys, this is my OTET apple, which is, I think, my favorite fruit that there is in Jamaica. But, guys, there is no blossoms, nothing yet. But it's still a very, very young tree. All those leaves are also new leaves, so I'm not spraying, you know, it lasts, it does, it grows well this, this season, so that I can get some um, fruit next year. Then right here, guys, I have, um, this is a, a banana from, this is a boar banana from my friend Tony Ann. And this banana tree gives you the, the big fat bananas. It's a very thick, very fat banana that people use to make um, moros. Not moros, um, they beat it and make like fried plantains with it. And oh, guys, look, it has a little pop. I didn't notice it, it has a little pop. These boro bananas, this tree is going to get very, very, very large. It's a very, very tall tree that you almost have to get a ladder to pick the fruit. So looking forward to having this in the garden. Then back here, right, tucked in along the, with the Kalalu guys, I have bungo peas or pigeon peas, gandules, growing up all around. I have one here. I have another one here that I need to prop up. It's 
leaning over, but my gondolas are doing extremely well. I have, here you see, I have more Mexican sunflowers popping up. I'm gonna pop those up and get, get those off the property because I, I, I can't have too many Mexican sunflowers. Here I have my sour sub tree, which I thought had died, but I left the stump in. The leaves are coming back, so I'm hoping this one survives. Then guys, I call this my Gunga walk. I have gondolas all the way along here, stuck some little marigolds in between, but I have red gondolas, red pigeon peas, and green pigeon peas. So this whole pathway has probably like about 15 pigeon pea trees. Here I have another Jamaican cherry tree that also is beginning to blossom. So I'm hoping uh, to get some fruit. I actually got one ripe cherry, only one ripe cherry so far. It was small, but it's growing nicely now. Here I have my mommy tree looking quite yellow right now, but I'm hoping that I'm going to fertilize it. Hopefully it will come back. And up here I have my Moringa trees. I have a little Persian shield here right between the Moringas. And if you guys remember, my Moringa tree was one straight branch with some leaves on top. And now guys, look, it has multiple branches, multiple branches because I chopped it back. And look, in just a short time, all the leaves have come back. It's time to get harvested again. So right here, I have a neem tree and we all, we organic gardeners all know we neem oil. That's the actual plant that neem comes from. So this is my neem tree and it has a little ornamental right behind it. I must have stuck that in there by mistake. Here I have my katuk tree guys and katuk, look how big this has gotten. Katuk is not just a beautiful plant with these beautiful little flowers and it has seeds. But katuk is like a miracle tree. I call this a multivitamin tree because it has so many vitamins. It's crazy. And I'm going to have them on Etsy soon. Um, I have multiple katuk plants growing below. I'm going to pot these up and I'll have katuk on sale. But katuk is a pretty incredible plant that you should have. All right. So let's see what else we have. So guys, this is my original ake tree, which was the one this was the one that was the bigger of the two ake trees and guys this hasn't grown more than the two feet that you see here but there is a lot of new leaves here i don't know why this one is growing so slowly there must be something with this location that it doesn't like versus the other one that was the one that we thought was gonna die that one was much smaller than this and that one as you can see is probably six seven feet tall whereas this one is which was a bigger one it's only two feet tall so guys i want to show you here in my island my lobster claws remember last year i told you about my lobster claws that i transplanted guys this is what the flower looks like i have my first flowers coming out on my lobster claws guys look at this so beautiful the leaves still look a little bit beat up but i've been trimming them back as a as the new leaves growing i've been trimming back the, the dead leaves but it's doing extremely well so i'm very happy about my lobster claws here I have my Mex another Mexican guava in my island. This was a very small sucker. And as you can see, this is blossoming for the first time. Very excited about it. And here's one of those frangipani I told you about. Multiple frangipani throughout the property. And then here is my mini dwarf, my dwarf naysberry tree. All right, so I'm gonna walk around this side. See my comfrey, my comfrey is spreading out nicely. Comfrey is a bone knit plant. And it's also really good for fertilizer to chop and drop. My bananas that are in my island, they have stayed small. They have never grown really big. I don't know if it's because in the island, um, there's like a heavy mesh underneath it. So maybe the soil doesn't get a chance to break down and feed the plants well, but it does look very healthy. So all of these guys are volunteers. You can see dill. Um, some of you, I think I ran out of dill on my Etsy store. But these are all volunteer dill and you can see it's loaded with, with, with seeds. So I'll have some of that on my Etsy. And then guys, look at these. These are all cranberry hibiscus seedlings. Literally probably have 50 seedlings here. So I'm going to be adding all of these to my Etsy. These are all um, seeds that fell from the one, the plant that I had here before. Um, I was sad when I lost that plant, but guys, I got like 50 plants. That's why guys, I always tell you, save your seeds, save your seeds. Right, so I have cranberry hibiscus and beautiful dill flowering everywhere. 
people will see this and think it's just a beautiful plant but guys it's food and it's medicine still and as you can see my original vervain that i got all those other cuttings and seeds from this is the original plant and you see how much vervain i have growing throughout the garden this is my white thai guava and i'm so happy guys that my white thai guava is also blossoming for the very first time it's also grown tremendously so for the first time i'm going to be eating white thai guava from my own garden here's one of my frangipani that is beginning to blossom and you can see it's just absolutely beautiful here is a red gold plum this was planted from a stick last year i lost most of the plums when the hailstorm came you can see the few plums that stayed on you can see the hail damage those chips on it are hail damage but the plum tree does look very very healthy here i have some murasaki slips and guys speaking of plums this was the dried up stick that was i left in the ground and i didn't i really and truly didn't expect this to come back this was a plum stick a red coat plum stick it had been hit several times by the weed whacker and it just wasn't coming back but guys look it sprung back from the root and now we have a nice red coat plum tree so i have a red and a yellow on this side my cassava walk right at the beginning of my cassava walk my june plums are coming back nicely you can see that those are little wrong spots those are also damaged from the hail but guys look lots of blossoms coming out lots of new blossoms lots of fruits so i'm gonna have lots of june plum to to enjoy and this is a dwarf june plum tree so it'll stay small but give me lots of fruit um i have a bride's bouquet right behind it um i got this as a cutting from a subscriber here he gave me this as a cutting very very thankful and on this side I have my sugar cane, which I harvested most of it. My lemongrass, guys, it came right back. Remember, I chopped it down to the ground. Lemongrass came right back. Have some more moorsack sweet potatoes. Then this new addition is a sour sop. Um, I added this new sour sop because I thought the other one had died, and I want to make sure I have a sour sop in my garden. This is my cassava walk. So all the cassavas that where the, those little tiny sticks that I put into the ground, guys, look at how they're growing up nicely. Right in front of the cassavas, I have this beautiful Jacob's coat. So we have Joseph coat, and this is Jacob's coat. I love this plant. I love these leaves. Um, so this is going to grow up nice and big. Um, here I have my chaya plant. Um, chaya tree spinach, also known as God's gift. And as you can see, guys, it's a wonderful pollinator. Look at all those pollinators just around the flowers. You know, guys, that's what I keep saying. Have your medicinal plants throughout the garden that has flowers. The flowers attract the pollinators and they pollinate your trees like your mangoes, your papayas, other trees that need pollination. Um, cassavas, lots of cassavas growing up. Um, right here is my East Indian mango tree, another one that blossomed but didn't bear fruit, but I did spray it at the same time when it was blossoming. So I'm going to be ready for it next year. Next year, I'm expecting fruits from all my mangoes. Behind it, I have another, my largest papaya tree that also has been struggling. Around here, I have my grove of bananas. I believe these bananas are either ice cream bananas or Cavendish. I'm not sure what kind they are, but they are the biggest bananas in, in um, my food forest. Behind here is a banana I got from Johnny's property that tour that's a large banana that he transplanted here that I, I mean he gave me and I transplanted it. it it looked like it was dying back at first because it was so big but then now guys it's nice and green and those are all new leaves and something that's peeping out here I see a couple pumpkins back here a couple pumpkins on here I had a pumpkin vine here that had died back but it looks like there are a few pumpkins left so I'll come back and pick those pumpkins up those that vine had died back long before the pug is fully developed but they look like they're still edible here i have my original red coat plum tree that um it's it didn't it hardly gave me any plums this year and then the hail came and knocked off most of them or damaged the plums but the tree looks healthy i'm gonna give it another year but i really should have gotten more plums from this here i just have some sweet potatoes that i started in pots this is Jamaican sweet potato. So this is my first time growing 
the sweet potato that we have in Jamaica. So I'm very, very excited about this. Murasake is a very good um, substitute for it. As a matter of fact, I was calling Murasake Jamaican sweet potato because they're so similar. But this, this is the true Jamaican sweet potato that I'm growing for the first time. Then guys, look at these two papaya seedlings. Look at the size of these. These were planted about the same time. Well, actually a month or two before the other ones, the other two new little ones that you saw. So these have been in the ground maybe four months. And these were small suckers, probably less than a foot tall and look how nice and big and healthy they are now. All right, so I wanna show you this. This is a, the largest frangipani. This is the first frangipani I planted when I moved here for my friend Gail. It hasn't flowered yet, but you said that this is a very unique, this one has a very unique, actually did flower. This one is a fuchsia color. So looking forward to it flowering this year. It has really gotten way bigger. It's the biggest frangipani I have now, probably about four feet tall. Then I can't forget my sweet sops. Um, there's my little sweet sop, my little sucker that is already pushing out flowers. This is a little sucker that I just stuck it behind, beside here because I wasn't sure, beside the mother plant because I wasn't even sure if it was going to blossom, um, if it was going to grow. But this has grown and now is now giving me blossoms. So I am looking forward to having sweets up this year. Normally I have a 100% success rate with hand pollinating, but of course to hand pollinate you need pollen and for some reason there's just hardly any pollen. When I check the male flowers, there's just hardly any pollen, but I might have to go to Johnny and um, get some of the pollen from his uh, male flowers. Anyway, this is what I have in the island here. It's, it's doing well. My curry leaf tree or my curry leaf bush. Um, this is used in mainland India. Uh, well, I'm sure in other parts of Asia, but it's the curry leaf plant. And you can see my island. I have my little grung orchids doing really nicely <clears throat> my monstera delicioso uh, my red thai my thai hawaiian thai plant and mm, you guys already saw that so let's walk go to the front real quick and look at some more of the plants i actually bought a florida prince peach guys i finally bought a peach after tasting johnny's florida peach i mean florida prince peach that was just so delicious and so juicy i had to buy one all right so here we have the front um this is just a little cutting i did off the <clears throat> for a vein you can see it's doing really nicely my bogan villa my bogan villa guys it is doing so beautifully it's beginning to spread out i just have to keep it under control because you know it has some big thorns but i'm so happy this was my mother-in-law's plant planted it in the ground it was dead or looked like it was dead and that's come back to life. So here I have my elderberry. Um, weeded it, mulched around it, and it's doing really well now. It was completely hidden by weeds, but I cleaned that up a cleaned that up a couple months back. Have some um, some coconuts back there, my little coconut plants, and a couple little mangoes. Really excited about this um, mango tree. Julie mangoes are normally small to medium-sized trees, but the super Julie. It's going to be a fully grown tree, a large tree. And I am so excited about this one, guys. This is one of the fruits that I, I sampled in Jamaica. This is a Rolinia tree. And guys, remember that was the first tree that Nick um, climbed. And the fruit is like a, a mild sweet sap. It's like a, it's like a, it, it has a flavor of more like a cross between sweet sap, sour sap, more towards a sour sap flavor. But it's in the same family as a sweet sap, sour sap absolutely 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 delicious delicious so i got a plant here so i'm super excited about this this one i'm definitely gonna baby you can see i've had it in the ground a few weeks now you can see it's already bringing some new leaves the leaves look a little droopy still even though it's been in the ground for a month but i'll definitely be keeping my eye on this and this tree a whole bunch of <laughs> blue jays just flew out of, out of here when it saw me coming i think they love this fruit even more than me this is the strawberry tree or cotton candy tree, otherwise known as Jamaican cherry, even though this is not what we eat in Jamaica. But what I, what I, what they heard me refer to as Jamaican cherry before is really the Barbados cherry. But in Jamaica, what we eat is the Barbados cherry. So that's why I always refer to that as a Jamaican cherry. This is called the cotton candy tree, the strawberry tree, Jamaican cherry tree, horticultural name. 
absolutely delicious. It has a sweet, you would say it tastes like cotton candy actually. I guess that's why it's called a cotton candy tree. But as you can see, every inch of it is laden with fruit, like literally thousands and thousands of fruit. Grows very quickly. I planted this as a four foot tree. Guys, look at the ground. The ground is actually full of fruit. So it grows extremely well, very prolific, delicious. The kids in the neighborhood like it. And here guys, I have my lychee tree. This lychee tree was doing so well up to like a month or two ago and then something started eating the leaves again. But it's healthy. It's just, I think the, um, something's just eating the leaves. So right in front of my, right in front of my lychee, I have these curcuma coming up. I planted the bulbs last year and you can see they're coming up beautifully and this may look very familiar to you guys. That's because it's in the same family as ginger and turmeric. It's in the ginger family, which of course turmeric is a part of that family and you see it looks exactly like a turmeric plant. So in the front, we have three frangipani and guys, oh my gosh, look how beautiful these are. So when I planted these sticks last year, I had no idea what color my frangipani were going to be. And so far, one is purple, one is yellow, and one is white. They haven't bloomed yet for this season, but the blooms are coming soon. Looks like I was wrong. The white one already bloomed. This is my snow in the mountain. It's a they already call it Jamaican Christmas tree because Christmas time, this entire tree turns white. So it's a really beautiful tree. And guys, that is it. For my tour my front yard is coming along really nicely i have one more plant i want to show you and also i want to show you this section right alongside my my um driveway i'm going to be planting more trees here i had a jackfruit tree there that i didn't water and it died um there's a another plant that dried up but one special plant that i just planted from i, I heard it's from my childhood i don't remember this one i don't think i was born yet but this is a cocoa plum this is gonna grow into a hedge. Right now it's only about a foot tall. It's gonna go into a hedge and it has a really nice plum called coca plum that grows in Jamaica. I don't remember ever eating a coca plum, so I'm looking forward to it. And of course we have our hibiscus here, guys. The hibiscus, they are probably eight feet tall right now. That one is at least. Anyway guys, that is it for today's video. Really hope you like this tour. And I really hope this encourages you. My garden, as of right now, is almost 18 months old. So just a year and less, just under a year and a half old. And all these plants, have, they weren't all grown at one time. They were all grown every month. I plant something else. But guys, go ahead and plant a seed today. Buy a fruit tree, plant a fruit tree, plant some flowers to pollinate your fruit trees. And in no time, guys, you can have a garden full of beautiful fruit and flowers to enjoy. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to subscribe to me. And so you can see my videos as I come out, as they come out. And also I show you step by step what I do to grow this food, how I create my beds, how I choose my plants, how I choose where I plant my plants. So guys, lots to come. Lots more to grow, lots more to plant. Till next time guys, bye now.